Hi, welcome to Christine's Corner. Uh, today I have uh, Jean Kelly. She's a retired uh, librarian from the Plainville Library, and she'll be reading you children's books. Hi, Jean. Thank Hi. you for coming. Thank it's wonderful to be here again. You have wonderful books. Yes. Love to see there it. There are some great books here okay. today. Thank you. And it's great to be on this show today again. And we have three wonderful books to go through. And the first one is called Fiona Flamingo. And it is written by Rachel y Yerushia Chu and illustrated by Kate Jeffrey. Now, Fiona Flamingo um, is published by, in the United States by Puppy Dogs and Ice Cream Incorporated. And I think that you are all very much going to enjoy this. On a beautiful, sunny afternoon where life was simply the best, a little flamingo named Fiona hatched from her egg in a nest. And there she is hatching. Little Fiona grew up making lots of friends. They played flamingo games from day's start to day's end. It looks such fun. As the time passed, the birds all became stronger. They also got pinker and their feathers grew longer. They turned pinker and pinker with each feather they grew. They got bigger and bigger until some of them flew. Fiona remained featherless until it happened one night. She woke up with feathers, but they were bright white. And there's a picture of Fiona covered in white feathers. The other flamingos gasped and stared at her in shock. They couldn't believe what they were seeing and wildly began to squawk. The friends looked at the white feathers not knowing what to think. You're not the right color. Flamingos are supposed to be pink. While everyone shouting, Fiona began to get scared. She looked at her feathers and then she looked at theirs. You don't have to be so loud and please don't make a scene. That's when Fiona started shaking and her feathers turned green. When her friends saw the change, they squawked louder and meaner. Fiona got more anxious and her feathers got greener. What a surprise that must have been for Fiona. Her friends looked at the green feathers, not knowing what to think. Stop being so silly, Fiona. Flamingos are supposed to be pink. And there they are gasping. What are they going to do with a green flamingo? Oh no, said Fiona. This is worse than just bad. But her friends kept on squawking 
And then Fiona got mad. You're making me angry, she jumped and furiously said. That's when Fiona started yelling and her feathers turned to red. And there she is. Now she's a red flamingo. The flock became silent, hoping things would get better. But Fiona got madder and her feathers grew redder. Her friends looked at the red feathers, not knowing what to think. Don't you think you should calm down now? Flamingos are supposed to be pink. They all rushed to hug her, and now Fiona felt bad. Her anger was fading, but now she felt sad. And there were her friends all around her. She whimpered and cried, I'm all mixed up in hue. That's when Fiona started sobbing and her feathers turned to blue. The flock watched from afar and their concerns grew truer, but Fiona just got sadder and her feathers grew bluer. There's a blue Fiona. Her friends looked at the blue feathers, not knowing what to think. Just what kind of a bird are you? Flamingos are supposed to be pink. No one could cheer her up, so instead they stayed away. That's when Fiona got lonely and her feathers turned to gray. A young chick floated up with a gaze so pure and true. I hope my feathers change colors when I'm as big as you. Fiona flashed a happy smile and her feathers erupted in color. It was a surprise to everyone no feather was like the other. Pink, white and green, red, blue and gray. She was every single color now. And that's the way she'd stay. She would always be a wonderful mixture of colors. Isn't she beautiful? So that was a very happy ending. The entire flock gathered around and Fiona gave a big wink. I guess we've all learned a lesson here. Flamingos don't have to be pink. And there she is with her friends. A very happy ending. Well, I shall look more intently at flamingos from now on. Now, our second book tonight, I Can Yell Louder. Do you ever notice some people have to express themselves with louder voices? And this is an interesting story of one young lady. This is I Can Yell Louder by author Jennifer Gaither, illustrator C. Jane Katempo, and it is from the same producer.
and it, it's all rights reserved, published in the United States by Poppy, Puppy Dogs and Ice Cream. Isn't that a wonderful combination incorporated? I can yell louder. There's a girl in my class whose name is Michelle. And I've got to tell you, she just loves to yell. When she doesn't get her way, she's demanding and rude. And unless it's something sweet, she won't eat her food. And there she is, very unhappy at lunchtime with whatever she's getting. One sunny afternoon, my class went out to play. We sat under a tree, enjoying a warm spring day. Doesn't that look fun? It was all so great, an afternoon dream, but then the peace was shattered when Michelle began to scream. There she is, very, very irritated. The ballerina stopped dancing and the cows stopped mooing. The deer stopped prancing and even their cars stopped moving. I was so tired of the noise, it was time for her to stop. So I came up with a plan before our eardrums would pop. I walked up to Michelle, a big smile on my face, but I stumbled and fell and tripped on my shoelace. They're rather unhappy as she trips on her shoelace. I quickly stood up after tying my shoe and declared to Michelle, I can yell louder than you. She scrunched up her face and let out a scream. She yelled so loud, her ears started to steam. Did you ever see anyone with steaming ears? <laughs> the clown stopped joking and the baby stopped crying. The frog stopped croaking and even the birds stopped flying. That was nothing, I boasted and opened my mouth. I let out a scream, but no sound came out. The shell's eyes started to water as she laughed at the sight. A scream with no sound just doesn't work right. Michelle teased with a smirk. You were quiet as a gnat, but I smiled with confidence. Are you sure about that? My scream was so loud, it couldn't be heard. Michelle rolled her eyes. Well, that's just absurd. Actually, I said, it really is true. I guess it's just something you cannot do. Michelle screamed so loud that it shook the whole school. It even made waves in the swimming pool. My sneaky plan was working. A silly scream with no sound. Michelle's voice was getting tired as the class 
gathered around. The harder she tried, the quieter she got, until no sound was left, or at least not a lot. And there she is trying. Michelle is no longer the loudest yeller in class. She learned that yelling was silly. It's now a thing of the past. And there they are, all quietly listening, which is wonderful. What we've learned from Michelle is a valuable lesson today. Yelling is never the answer when you don't get your way. And that's the end of the book, and they're all happy under a tree. A great lesson there. And now, the last book that we're going to read this today is called The Secret Words. The Secret Words is written by Dominic Anglin and the illustrations are by Marta Magnuska the copyright by Puppy Dogs and Ice Cream and uh, they also um, published this copy, The Secret Words. Once upon a time, there lived an AA called Rija. Rija lived with her mom, dad, her older brother, Tojo, and her younger sister, Ivana, high up in a canopy tree on the island of Madagascar. During the daytime, she slept in her nest uh, with her family, and at night, she helped her mom find food in the trees. And there they are, they look quite comfortable in the tree in Madagascar, don't they? Rija liked finding fruit on the low branches the best because whenever she started to climb higher, she thought, I can't do it and couldn't climb any higher. So she stayed on the lower branches where the fruit grew close to their nest. Tojo and his friends always played on the higher branches. They would climb so high up and all Rija could do was watch from below. She wanted to climb up to them, but again, whenever she tried, she would think the same thing. I can't do it. Regio played tennis and even thought she did have fun playing. She never managed to win a game because when she was playing, she would think, I can't do it. And she'd miss every ball. Look how unsatisfying that was. Ivana was just learning to climb now. She could climb much higher than Regia ever could. One night, Ivana was playing with Tojo and his friends when suddenly she fell and was much higher than Regia 
had ever been, and now she needed help fast. Riju looked up and heard Ivana call out, Raja, help! Tojo was too far away to make it in time, but then something new happened. Rija said to herself, I can do this. And she leaped up to a branch that was below where Ivana was falling and caught her before she hit the ground. Now that was amazing. Tojo arrived seconds later. Rija, that was amazing. I've never seen you jump that far before. How did you do that? And Rija thought back to right before she jumped. That's when she remembered what she had thought. I told myself, I can do this, and I jumped. Wow, that was so brave, said Tojo. Ivana had already started climbing again, but this time she was climbing down to their nest. The next night at school, there was a test, and Rija felt different than normal. When the test started, she waited for a moment, closed her eyes and thought to herself, I can do this. And then she began to write. At the end of the class, Mrs. Rover called her over. Rija, this is the best score you've ever gotten. You must have prepared a lot for this. I did, but it was more than that, Mrs. Rover. Before I started, I told myself, I can do this, and then started writing. That's fantastic, Rija. You know those words, the secret words, that not many people know. Teaching yourself you can do something is very powerful. And even if you don't succeed the first time, you can always repeat and succeed the next. In fact, the only way to succeed at anything in life is by trying and learning through failure. From that day onwards, Rija started to always use her secret words for everything she did. And even if she didn't succeed straight away, she didn't mind now, she told herself. I can do this, if not tonight, then the next night, or the one after that. Now, wasn't that fantastic that she had learned that lesson? A lesson she can carry throughout her life. Just keep trying. It's been a joy to be here today. Thank you.